Exotics in Destiny are the most prestigious and unique weapons in the game. We have options that deal massive damage, options that give back ability energy, and options that make things go boom. Every Destiny player has at least one exotic weapon that they hold close to their heart. So today, I'm going over my list of the top 10 exotic primary weapons that every Guardian should have. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. First up on our list is Wishkeeper. This strand bow allows you to build up points with precision hits and final blows. And when at six stacks, you can fire from the hip to send out a trap that will suspend targets inside of it. And with its other perk, you can deal bonus damage and increase draw speed when you damage a suspended target. It has four catalysts to choose from. Personally, I like Hatchling Refit so that it can spread out more damage. Though Vorpal and Multi-Threaded Snare are also good picks. This weapon shines when it comes to strand builds and end game content. While it lacks a little bit in damage, it excels in utility. With the capability to suspend targets, we can stop a group of adds from overwhelming us, but it also means that you can intrinsically stop unstoppable champions. And because it's strand, if you proc unraveling rounds, you can also stun barrier champs. That's two champs for one weapon. The amount of strand synergy with this weapon makes it perfect for many strand builds, and potentially some new prismatic builds. This weapon is even fantastic for game modes like Onslaught to help stop those enemies from reaching your ADU. To get it, you have to reach step 27 in the Season of the Wish quest. After completing the Apophysis mission, speak with Crow at the helm to get the exotic quest for Wishkeeper. Catalyst can be gained by completing the Constellation quest, which can be picked up from Marasov. Coming in at number 9, we have Risk Runner, which is an Arc SMG with two powerful perks. When you take Arc damage, Arc Conductor is activated, and kills with this weapon refresh it. While you have Arc Conductor activated, you're granted 10% increased damage, unlimited ammo, and consecutive hits will spread lightning to deal AoE damage. Its ad clearing potential is pretty strong, but one of the most important perks is actually its ability to keep you alive. See, while Arc Conductor is active, you gain 50% Arc damage resistance. This alone is what makes this weapon so powerful. When running activities where arc damage is very prevalent, like the dungeon Ghost of the Deep, it's tremendous to use Risk Runner to help with your survival. When you have 6 arc moths kamikaze at you, you'll be happy you have Risk Runner on. After completing the Into the Light tutorial, you should receive a quest that will eventually grant you Risk Runner, so most people should have this weapon. And like all other exotic weapons, it can be reacquired from collections if you don't still have it in your vault. The Catalyst grants 30 to range, which on an SMG can be useful, but it isn't super necessary, so it's definitely usable without the Catalyst. And coming in at number 8, we have Outbreak Perfected, the craftable version. This kinetic pulse rifle is honestly one of my guilty pleasures. Scoring multiple hits on a target will create nanites, and precision kills spawn even more nanites. These nanites track to the nearest target, dealing a bit of damage and embedding themselves in that target. The beautiful thing is, the more nanites you create, the more damage you deal. With Outbreak Perfected, you deal increased damage to the target depending on how many nanites it has embedded in it. The initial damage increase ramps up very quickly, giving you 150% increased damage after just 5 nanites, but after 100 nanites, you'll be dealing 350% more damage. The cool thing about this weapon is that it's both strong with a team and solo. Since the damage ramp up is pretty quick, it will shred through most miners and elites. But even when you have multiple people running this weapon, you can use it on tougher targets like mini bosses and bosses to deal some pretty high damage for a primary weapon. I actually used this with two of my buddies to take down Kallus in the final Lightfall campaign mission and was very pleased with how it performed. And now that it has a craftable version with perks like Rapid Hit and Head Seeker, I'm super excited to give this weapon another go. By completing the zero hour mission, you can gain access to the craftable version of this weapon. At number 7, we have the Verglass Curve. This stasis bow is like the stasis counterpart to Wishkeeper. Kills will grant you a stack of Hail Barrage, which can stack up to 5 times. Firing from the hip, this bow will release any stacks of Hail Barrage that you have and create crystals on impact, or freeze a target if it hits a target. This bow also grants 50% increased damage against frozen enemies and crystals, which can stack with Whisper of Rending to make it easy to kill frozen targets or shatter crystals. Most stasis spills revolve around one thing shattering crystals or frozen targets. And this bow does both. Having a way to continuously create crystals means you can take advantage of Whisper of Shards to gain 500% increase to your grenade recharge rate, or Whisper of Rhyme to gain 35 health from each of those crystals when you break them. Plus, you can bring Whisper of Fissures that will increase the size and damage from shattering those crystals. I love bringing this bow for my stasis builds to help create mass amounts of crystals and fully take advantage of my stasis synergies. If you plan on using stasis, this bow is a necessity to take your build to the next level. This originally dropped from the season 
season pass, but you can now pick it up from the tower kiosk. The catalyst is pretty strong, allowing you to decrease your draw time when applying freeze or slow. So make sure to get the catalyst as soon as you can. Coming in at number six, we have Graviton Lance. This is a two burst void pulse rifle. The main perk to this weapon is that when you kill an enemy, it will cause an explosion that will generate void orbs and deal more damage to nearby enemies. This is fantastic for ad clearing because of how many explosions you can cause. And since the explosions count as a weapon kill, it can cause chain reactions that will infinitely kill enemies as long as there's enemies to kill. This is phenomenal for void builds, especially like the Gear Falcons Hunter build that we've shown off on the channel before. With a void build, you want to kill as much as you can to proc your devour, which heals you and gives you back more grenade energy. Plus, you can proc volatile rounds to make this weapon even more powerful. If you want to run a void build, then this is a must have weapon. This is a year one exotic that doesn't have a quest. So the only way to get it is to either purchase exotic engrams from Xur or try to get lucky from any exotic engram drops. Its catalyst is pretty necessary. It provides the weapon with Vorpal to deal more damage to bosses and mini bosses, as well as turnabout, which means that when you break an enemy shield with this weapon, you gain an overshield, which can help out with even more survivability. And coming in at number five, we have Trinity Ghoul. This arc bow has to be one of, if not the best ad clearing weapon in the game. With its lightning arrows, you can deal chain arc damage within an eight meter radius. The beautiful thing is that you can shoot these arrows on the ground and it will still chain this damage to nearby targets, allowing you to be a lot less precise and still deal massive AOE damage. This weapon is fantastic for low main activities like solo dungeons or nightfalls. So if you are a solo player, this weapon is right up your alley. To be clear, this weapon is meant for ad clearing. If you have a ton of enemies that need to be wiped out, this is your weapon. But because of that, it doesn't deal a ton of single target damage. So if you planned on using it for bosses or mini bosses or tormentors, don't bother. It's not that good. It's also a year one exotic like Graviton Lance, so the only way you can get it is to either buy those engrams from Xur or try to get lucky from those world drop exotic engrams. The exotic catalyst is a game changer for this weapon. Normally, you have to get a precision kill to get the lightning rod arrows. But with the catalyst, any arc kills give you the lightning rod arrows. Yes, that's right. Kills from this weapon, kills from your arc abilities, any arc kills. So definitely pick up the catalyst if you plan on using this weapon. Coming in at number four, we have Malfeasance. This kinetic hand cannon has quickly become one of my favorite weapons over the past year. Hits on enemies will embed themselves, and when you get that fifth hit, all five bullets will explode, dealing fairly high damage and stunning unstoppable champions. While this weapon is fairly strong in normal play, it absolutely decimates any activity with taken enemies. Intrinsically, this weapon deals an extra 25% more damage to taken enemies or enemies affected by blight from weapons like Wither Horde. This makes activities like the Corrupted Knight Nightfall a breeze. But we have to talk about the Catalyst, which grants this weapon 20 range and Vorpal. It's pretty simple, but it's very necessary. See, with builds like the Lucky Pants Void Hunter build that we've talked about before, you can absolutely shred bosses, especially if they're taken, like the final boss from Warlord's Ruin. This is a fantastic weapon that becomes very powerful in the right hands. After you get your first Gambit win, you'll receive a quest called Darkness in the Light. Finishing this quest line will eventually reward you with Malfeasance. And coming in at number three, we have Wish Ender, which is a kinetic bow that deals three separate damages that can continue to shoot through a line of targets. One of the main perks of this bow is its anti-barrier capabilities. Yes, you can stun anti-barrier champs, but it also means you can shoot through any other barriers like Cabal Shields, Hydra Shields, Hobgoblin Solar Shields, and even cheese some of the Vex shields from exotic missions, but those usually end up getting patched. The pure damage and utility from this bow for endgame content like Grandmaster Nightfalls is why it's so high on my list. This is the let me find a way to cheese this boss weapon. I've done plenty of Grandmaster Nightfalls where we just sit back and chip away at the boss. And since it does so much damage, it's very good at taking out random things like those Thresher ships you know, the flying cabal ships that never stop shooting missiles at you, I definitely don't recommend this bow for normal content, since there are many other weapons that can absolutely shred way better than it. But when it comes to difficult activities or chipping away at bosses from safety, this is your weapon. And a hot tip for you, this bow actually does 10% more damage to taken enemies, and 25% more damage to enemies affected by Wither Horde. If you own the Forsaken DLC, going to the quest archive, you can pick up the quest for Wish Ender to be able to finally get your hands on this lovely bow. At number two, we have Sunshot, which is a solar hand cannon that has been running rampant in most of Destiny for this season, and for good reason. Kills with this weapon will cause targets to explode and apply 10 Scorch to any nearby targets. The fact that all you have to do is get a kill to make a target explode is fantastic. This is like the solar hand cannon version of Graviton Lance, except in most cases, hand cannons can perform better. And with seasonal artifact perks like Rays of Precision and Flint Striker, you can get Radiant on other subclasses besides solar and cause 
caused even more explosions. But even without the artifact perks, this weapon is phenomenal for its ad clearing potential. This is especially seen when killing groups of enemies. It intrinsically receives explosive payload, meaning that in activities like the Warlord's Ruin Dungeon, you can take out multiple targets with one bullet, like those eyes that you need to shoot to trigger the damage phase for the final boss. It hits hard and causes explosions. What more do you need? And same as the Graviton Lance, this is a year one exotic, so the only way to get it is to get those exotic engrams from Xur, or get lucky from world drop exotic engrams. The Catalyst is fairly necessary, since it will provide 30 range and 20 stability, and hand cannons can struggle a little bit at range, so the extra range is actually very helpful. And before we get to our number one spot, I do have some honorable mentions. Quicksilver Storm is a strand auto rifle that has some fantastic strand synergies. It would have made the list before the recent nerf, but now it sits just outside of that threshold. Thorn is a kinetic hand cannon that causes poisoning on shots. It does hit hard, but because of how niche it is, by its potential with necrotic grips and its need for a catalyst, it barely doesn't make the cut in my opinion. It's still a very solid weapon though. Wicked Implement is kind of in that same realm, since it's a stasis scout that can cause freezing and slowing with precision hits. Because you have to be so precise, it doesn't perform as well as other weapons in most activities. It does however perform very well in the hands of a stasis warlock in GMs, so it can be very strong in the right situation, but it's not that many situations so it barely didn't make the list. We also have Hierarchy of Needs. This solar bow makes the honorable mentions for one reason, Super Regeneration. Super Regen is based off of damage dealt, so because this bow can split arrows you send and those arrows are explosive, you deal a ton of damage very quickly to a group of enemies, leading to a very short cooldown on your super. And the Mana Core is a Void SMG that charges up an anti-grav meter when you're shooting enemies from the ground. And while you're hovering, you're harder to hit, deal more damage, and you get an overshield. The Catalyst is basically a must for this weapon. I haven't used it enough recently to know if it should rank on my top 10, but I do know it's a very powerful weapon. And finally for our honorable mentions list, we have Monte Carlo, which is a kinetic auto rifle that makes the honorable mentions list for one reason, melee builds. I'm not in love with the Catalyst, but the fact that you have a 25% chance to fully restore your melee makes it perfect for those niche melee builds like Strand Titan. And coming in at number one is the final warning, which is a strand sidearm that is way too good. I'm not sure how many people know this, but sidearms already have some of the highest base DPS primary weapons have to offer, with only two other hand cannon archetypes beating them out. Granted, in most cases, you need to be up close to fully take advantage of that DPS. But the crazy thing is, because this sidearm already puts out more DPS than most weapons at a base level, when you factor in its perk all at once, this thing absolutely shreds. This makes it so that holding down the trigger will mark targets and charge up a burst. Marked enemies will receive 20% more damage to body shots while you're firing from the hip, but if you aim down sights, you'll get the crazy amount of DPS that we're talking about. See, projectiles already have a 1.4 times crit multiplier, but when a marked target takes precision damage while aiming down sights, it receives an extra 100% increased damage. This sounds a bit confusing, but basically, hold down that trigger to mark a target, ADS, and hit that crit to absolutely cook. When hitting the crit, this weapon honestly starts to feel like a special weapon more than a primary weapon. The crazy thing is, even with all this damage, if you fully charge up a burst, you'll also unravel the target to deal even more damage and stun barrier champions. When you pair this with fragments like Thread of Rebirth and Thread of Evolution, you can create a ton of Threadlings that deal massive amounts of damage just by getting kills. This weapon is honestly so powerful, it really needs a nerf. <clears throat> but Bungie, if you're listening, this is completely balanced. Yep, nothing to see here. Move along, move along. Move along, move along. Once Strand is fully unlocked for one of your characters, you'll receive the quest, The Final Strand, which unlocks Final Warning when you complete it. With the final shape right around the corner, now is the time to go get these weapons. Set yourself up for success with everything from ad clearing machines to the best weapons for hard content. I will be making videos that go over the top 10 special and heavy exotic weapons, so keep an eye out for those and links will be in the description when they're available. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective, feel free to like the video and comment down below which exotic primary is your favorite and why. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next Adventure Guardians.